So, um, faith is not blind. This is what I wanted to talk about in the previous video I just uploaded, um, where I ended up ranting a little bit about um, the power of God and the gospel and miracles and signs and wonders. That's not what I was aiming to talk about, but um, I just felt led down that road and I went there. And I don't think it was as coherent as I wanted it to be, but well, the the idea behind the seed is that some will fall on good soil, some will fall on rocky soil, some will fall on thorny soil, etc. And the bottom line is, uh, poor plants, Apollo waters, God gives increase. That's God's job. But here I want to talk specifically about faith. And I have found that I end up being challenged a lot of the time by well-meaning children of God and um, some Christians and often by non-Christians, especially by non-Christians who say that, you know, you claim to be a Christian, but everything on, in Christianity is based on faith and, uh, you know, the idea of believing in a God that you cannot see, who can never prove himself, who can never show himself, it's foolishness and it's dogmatism and there's no reason why you should not subscribe to science and or evolution and things like that. And I'm saying this now because of a lot of us who are challenged in similar ways and we find it very difficult to explain what we are saying. You see, I want to make it very clear. Faith is not and never has been blind faith is purposeful faith is clear faith is based on evidence and that's the part that we will find very exciting i'll keep it as quick short and straight to the point as possible faith is based on evidence you'll find in the old testament most times when god introduced himself said i am the god of abraham of isaac and of jacob in other words god is saying you've heard about me you know about me. You know those things that I have done. Go look up the history. Go look up the story. Then come back and tell me whether you need to believe in me or not. Um, uh, he, said, he often says, I am the God who brought you out of the land of Egypt with a strong arm and with a stretched, with a strong hand and with a stretched out arm. Uh, the sounds can be exciting. He's saying that go look at that evidence. Go look at the things that I have done through the course of history. Look at the way I shook Egypt with plagues. Look at the way I buried their army in the sea. Look at the way I preserved you through the wilderness. Fire by night, cloud by day. Manna from heaven, quail, water from the rock, clothes growing on your back as you were aging. They did not wither, they did not fall apart while you were in the wilderness for 40 years. I supplied all your needs. I sustained you. You do not have any good excuse to doubt me right now. Uh, something that uh, John wrote about in First John, I've quoted it before in one of my previous passages, in one of my previous videos, and I'm quoting it again right now. John said, that which was from the beginning, he's talking about Jesus Christ as God, which we have heard, talking about the word that has been spoken, which we have seen with our eyes, talking about the fact that he lived with Jesus Christ, which we have looked upon, talked about how he has lived and walked with Christ, which our hands have handled, he touched Jesus. Remember at the, uh, at the uh, Last Supper, the Bible records that, Jesus, that John had his head on Jesus' chest. The word of the word of life, John, first John chapter 1. I just read verse 1, <clears throat> verse 2 for the will for the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to her to us, unto us. Verse 3 That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son Jesus Christ. Listen, that which we have seen and heard, that is what we are talking about, so that you can partake of the beauty of it. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. Listen, you cannot talk about something you don't know anything about. 
that's one of the challenges I have with many of the modern Christian films. Uh, if you look at the old ones, I was having a chat with a friend a couple of days ago. If you look about the old, if you look at the old ones, Ben Hur, uh, Ten Commandments. You know those old films. There was an understanding. You know of who God is. There was an obvious awareness, a relationship with Him, a fear of God that was in those films that is not in contemporary movies. Some of the very, some of the very recent movies. Listen, War Room was superb. War Room was superb. Uh, a couple others that I can't uh, think of right now. And that's that's a function of how impactful they have not been. They are good movies and they help. But a lot of them, to be honest, are based on new age doctrine. A lot of them are based on the word of faith movement, which was not strictly a bad movement, but there were errors in it. So some of these guys claim to have experienced God, but they have not experienced God in genuineness. And that's why in my last video I went on and ended up speaking about um, having a form of godliness but forsaking the power thereof. You know, if you don't know God on a personal level, you cannot speak about him and you cannot trust him. Faith is not blind. Faith is based on the things that God has done in your life with you. You know, I have God has deliberately taken me through some very challenging experiences. Um, several years ago, about eight years ago, I had a revelation, a dream in which God told me, basically, uh, okay, let me soften the language a little bit and say, you know, he basically told me, you know, you, you're going to be having a rough time. And a couple of years later, the rough times kicked in. The rough times kicked in. It was rough. And I was not hearing from him. And I broke down in tears. And I was crying and saying, Lord, how can this be happening to me? I mean, I've done this, I've done this, I've done that. Why? And such and such and such. And most of us as children of God must come to that place. And at my one of those low moments, wasn't my lowest, but one of those low moments, while I was in tears, I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit speak to me. He hasn't done that a lot in recent times. I'm talking about back then. He hadn't done that in recent time. And he spoke with me. I said, I told you this was going to happen. And the instant I heard those words, I was elated. I was lifted up. And a song came to me, and I sang that song for weeks through that bad patch in my life. That is faith. So now my faith is based on the experience that I have had. So God is now telling you that based on the experience that you have heard, you have, that you have had, and based on the words that you have heard, based on the stories about him that have been told to you. And that brings us to Hebrews chapter 12. Seeing that you are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, people who have had experiences that you are yet having, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth so easily beset us, and let us run this race that is set before us. <laughs> Listen, you are running the race based on faith, faith that is based on evidence, that is based on the experiences that you have had, that is based on the words that Jesus has spoken to you. That is based on the people that have gone before you. Faith is not blind. It is loaded with evidence. I was supposed to drop out of university. God did not allow me to. I was supposed to be barren. God did not allow me to. That is evidence. I am not talking about something that somebody told me. I am talking about experiences that I have had. I was driving a car that was empty. There was no fuel in it. And I spoke by his grace onto that car. And I drove with that car from me but not to Lagos. That is not hearsay. Ah, I lost. Oh my goodness. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. These things are based on facts, on evidence. And if you do not have those evidences, if you don't have them or if you don't believe in God based on those evidences, then what's the point? Why should God waste his time? Because you have already made up your mind you're not going to believe. That's what it is. Faith is not blind. So, listen, count the cost. Or rather, no, no, no. Count your blessings. That's what the song says. Count your blessings. Name them all by one. Listen, look at the things that God has done for you. Remember them. Remember when you were in Egypt. Remember how he brought you into this promised land. Remember those who were in this land before you, whom he drove out so that he can install you in that place. Remember when you prayed and he answered. Now, based on that, 
trust him for what he has said, which does not make sense and which does not look like it's going to happen. But because he has done that which he did in the past, he's going to do that which is yet, that which is yet coming. Because, listen, he said, he said yeah, 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 David said, listen, I was tending my sh I was tending the sheep, my father's sheep, and then the lion and the bear attacked me and they stole, but I, I went after them. I caught the lion by the beard <laughs> and I smote him. Said the God who saved me from that lion, the God who saved me from that bear is going to deliver me from this uncircumcised Philistine. That is faith. Faith is based on evidence of things that have happened before and things that have been told you in time past. So I'm asking you to remember the things that God has said to you. Read your Bible and let it build your faith about the things that God has stood for in time past and that it still stands for today. Remember the times that you prayed and he answered your prayers. Remember the times that, that you didn't think you could make it and yet you made it. That is faith. And then you say the same God who did that. The same God who did that is going to do this. That is faith. Faith is not blind. So when next somebody challenges you, especially an agnostic, especially an atheist, especially a Christian who thinks that the miracles of the times of the apostles is the miracles meant for the time of the apostles, but they're not intended for now, tell him, I have a God who never failed and never fails and never will. That is faith. Base your faith with substance. Substance of something you have not yet seen, but you have heard the stories. Base your faith on substance. Substance of things that have not yet come to pass, but you have had a few experiences. And you can say, Lord, you did it yesterday. You are going to do it today. You are going to do it tomorrow. And remind yourself constantly of these things as they happen. And as you do that, tell the world around you, you don't have a clue who my God is. But I'm about to show you, because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. Thank you very much for watching, for being patient with me, watching this. Uh, God bless you. Most importantly, share this video. Somebody may need to hear these words. Click on like, subscribe, leave a comment, ask a question, critique, criticism, insult, abuse, whatever. Um, click on notification so that you get another, so that you'll be informed when next video is released. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday.